Hey guys, Derek Craig here with Oilfield Basics. I'm about ready to go shoot a quick video about a conventional well site. And like many conventional wells in Appalachia, uh, this one's way up the hill in the middle of the woods. Uh, so what I'm standing on is the access road that they use uh, for this well. So this is what they used when they came in and drilled. And this is what uh, they use when the, bump, the pumper comes by to check on it, uh, to maintenance it, to pump it, etc. So... <laughs> Just thought I'd uh, give you a quick view. This is pretty common in Appalachia. Um, I bet you can kind of see a tree down. That's blocking my way. I'm going to have to deal with here in a minute. Um, a lot of the wells are scattered all everywhere. So that's one difference right off the bat between a conventional well and an unconventional well. Uh, most of the conventional wells like this one are vertical. And they don't require much. You can pretty much pop them anywhere. Uh, nowadays, the regulations and rules and everything, anything that's unconventional, it's got a much larger uh, footprint in the sense of like access roads and everything just a little bit more official uh, than this. So <laughs> whether that's a pro or a con, I'll leave that up to you, but we're almost up. So one thing that's neat about a lot of the conventional wells here in Appalachia is that a lot of them you need a four-wheeler or at the very least a truck or <laughs> something to get to unless you want to walk a lot. And pumpers usually prefer the four-wheeler option. And of course, other than other than when they first drilled the well, the access road isn't used too much. Again, just by the pumpers and whatnot. But um, it becomes a little bit of an issue whenever they need to come back with a workover rig and do work on the, the well or something like that, where they have to reopen a path like that and make it a little bigger so they can bring up that workover rig. All right, so I crested the hill, and I'm at the top, and we're going to get our first look at a conventional well. Hey guys, so we've made it to the top of the hill and welcome to a conventional well site. So this is pretty typical, uh, something that you would see across country and especially here in Appalachia uh, for a conventional well site. So a lot of conventional wells, um, again, meaning conventional, they're tapping into a reservoir such as sandstone, limestone, dolomite. Uh, they're not the source rock itself like an unconventional well. So like a Utica shell or Marcellus shell, or um, Eagle Ford or anything else, uh, Permian Basin related, anything. So again, this is a conventional well site and a lot of conventional wells are indeed vertical. Uh, this is really where the industry got their start with vertical conventional wells. And so this is an example of a conventional well here that has a pump jack on it. So a lot of conventional wells do indeed have some type of artificial lift. And what is artificial lift? That'll be a whole nother video, but basically pump jack is a form of artificial lift. So Right off the bat, we have obviously the well itself. Now the pump jack isn't part of the well, it's just helping to produce the well. It's just a tool to get the production out more effectively. So the actual well and well head itself is literally right there where the um, horse head is and straight down from it, hold on, there we go, <laughs> straight down from it. Uh, that would be the well head itself. So, and we'll get a closer up view here in just a minute. So the well head itself is obviously the connection between the down, down hole reservoir and the surface and our production equipment at surface. So once you've got, um, once you got the wellhead, you have to flow that well's production into production equipment. So some, depending on the well, depending on what type of production it has, that might be straight to a tank. If it makes gas, it might go to a separator, if, especially if it's selling into a gas line. So there's a lot of similarities here between an unconventional and conventional site. Just the scale is a world of difference. So again, your production is gonna be reaching the surface here. This is where the oil, the gas, and even the water, whatever else would, would come up to surface and reach surface. And then it goes into flow lines into the production equipment here on the other side. All right, so once your oil and your gas and your water reach the surface, it must be processed or stored or sent away. So on this site, which is very typical for most conventional sites here in Appalachia, the everything coming off the well itself is going to go straight to the separator. So that's what that is right there, the separator. And you can kind of tell how much that well makes based on the size of the separator. If it's a really big separator, you probably have a pretty good volume well. Uh, this one's kind of mediocre. Um, so it, it goes into that separator right there, right there. <laughs> and um, the this happens to be a two-phase separator, meaning the liquids and the gas is gonna be separated out. Uh, maybe if you have a higher uh, volume well, you might have a three phase or something if there's some need to separate out the, the liquids. But most of the time on conventional well sites, especially here in Appalachia, it's just done by settling, settling in the tank. So your gas is going to come out the top of the separator and it's going to go into the sales line. 
and before it goes in the sales line, it has to be metered so you know how much you're selling and so you can get royalties and, and so that the operator can be paid. So right there is where the gas flow is metered and it goes into the sales line. And your liquids then is going to go from the separator, <laughs> I have to figure out where to point, from the separator it's going to go into a flow line and dump into the tanks. So this, this site happens to have two tanks and that's ma ma mainly a function of how often they anticipate that they can bring a truck in here to empty it as well as that well's production rates. Um, it's not specifically one for water, one for oil. Um, the way that this is hooked up, all of the liquids just dump into uh, most likely the first tank. Um, and then if that gets full, it would fill over into the second tank. Um, your oil and water then is going to separate out just by um, densities uh, while they're in the tanks. And then the amount of oil being produced and sold is going to be measured when they truck it off site. So there you have it, a pretty basic overview of a conventional well site here in Appalachia. And to just give you an idea, again, we went from the well, the wellhead itself, uh, into flow lines underground, into the separator and metering equipment and eventually into the tank. So hope you all learned something in this video. And again, if you want to learn more uh, in detail, specifically on how wells are drilled, how they're fracked, how they're maintained, etc., uh, please check out our courses. We have multiple available now, oilfieldbasics.com. We appreciate all the support and help. Please feel free to drop us a like, comment, subscribe, etc. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. See you in the next one.